in the last video, we uh, took a look at improper fractions and how to plot them on a number line. We're going to use um, all of that information, all of those skills to help us also compare improper fractions using a number line. Okay, so if you need to go back and watch that video that is simply about placing improper fractions on a number line, that would be um, a good thing to do. Again, if you still need help with that before we start comparing improper fractions using a number line. So remember that improper fractions are any fractions that are greater than one. So the improper fractions we are going to use today, we're going to compare today, are three halves, nine fifths, and 14 tenths. So again, we can see that these are all improper because their numerators are greater than their denominators, which tells us they are greater than one. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll kind of um, break each of these down and plot them one at a time so that we can compare them. Now again, remember that when we are comparing improper fractions, our number line does not start at zero because all of our fractions, if they're improper, will be greater than one. So our number line starts at one. For this, um, this lesson is gonna end at two and then our midway point or our midway benchmark is going to be one and one Okay, again, not just one half, but it's one plus another half. So let's go ahead and plot our first improper fraction, which was or is three halves. Okay, now if we need, we can always break our improper fractions down or decompose them so that we know how much more we need to go up from the whole, okay? So I know that three halves is the same as two halves, that would be my whole, plus, let's make sure you can see that's a two, plus another one half, okay? So this one should actually be pretty easy to plot because we know that our two halves would be right here and an extra one half would give us three halves. So three halves is actually the same as one. Oops, again, I'm running off the board here. Three halves would be the same or is the same as one and one half. So that one is pretty easy to plot for us on the number line. Okay, the next fraction we're going to plot so we can compare it is nine fifths. Let's see, so again, let's just go ahead and make our bond. Let's decompose it. So I know that to make one whole, I need five fifths. Our denominator tells us how many parts go in a whole. And if I have nine fifths, then five fifths plus four more fifths will give me nine fifths, okay? So let's come back over to our number line. And in this case, our one would be represented by five fifths. I need to count up four more fifths. And let's remember that this is our whole, okay? So I'm thinking about fifths as they might break up between this point and this point. So I'm just gonna kinda estimate there's one fifth, two, three, four. That's pretty evenly spaced out, so I would feel pretty confident about putting my four fifth mark here, but let's remember that it's actually representing nine fifths. We can also think that nine fifths should be close to two because 10 fifths is the same as two, okay? So 
we can use all of our benchmarks to help us place improper fractions on a number line. All right, so we've got two of our fractions we're going to compare. Now let's plot one more. So, so far we have three halves and nine fifths. <sighs> the last fraction we are going to plot is 14 tenths, okay? Now if we break up 14 tenths, we know that we're going to have to have 10 tenths to make one whole. And we're going to have to have four more tenths to bring us to 14 tenths, okay? So we're done with our fifths. Let's think about our one as 10 tenths. And we know, um, thanks to our number bond, that we need to count up four more tenths. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. So we need four more tenths to get us to 14 tenths. So one thing I know is that one half is the same as five tenths. So 10 tenths plus five tenths, this would be 15 tenths right here. And I am trying to find 14 tenths, so that should be just below 15 tenths right here. So I would plot 14 tenths on my number line. And there I have my three improper fractions. So now we can look at our number line and it can help us very easily compare them. I can see, for example, that three halves is greater than 14 tenths. I can also see that 9 fifths is greater than 3 halves. Or if I want to write it the other way around, I could say 3 halves is less than 9 fifths. I could say 14 tenths is less than 9 fifths. Even though these numbers are smaller, you might notice this fraction, this improper fraction is smaller. And we can tell that we have our evidence because we used our benchmarks of one, two, and one and one half to compare our impact, improper fractions on a number line. So it's a very useful tool um, to help us actually see how improper fractions compare.